subscribe to his YouTube channel and press the bell icon so that you never miss any update. Yes, it's totally free. Uh, mukti could be defined in uh, various ways. The general definition which I give for Mukti is the liberation of senses. Now, when you see, you do not see without the interference of the mind. If you can see without the mind interfering, that is Mukti. If you can hear without the mind interfering, that is Mukti. The same applies to smell, touch and even thought. Thought also can be observed without your getting involved with the thought. Now what's happening is when you are thinking, you think you are thinking. But it is actually possible to see thoughts flow as though they, they are independent of you. This is a, a physical reality. Actually you can see thoughts. Any kind of thought would be coming into you and would be going out of you and you can watch them. So, this is the state of mukti, that is the complete liberation of the senses from the control of the mind. It's only such a being who is actually living. Wherever the mind is in control, you are not living. When the mind is not there, then you are actually living. That's why when people ask me, what is the purpose of life, my answer is, if you are living, you won't ask, ask that question. The purpose of life is to live. What does that mean? To live the life of the senses. The senses must be independent and free of the mind. Now what's happening is, you are not at all experiencing reality. Reality to you is what is flowing through the senses. Now all the time you are interpreting whatever data is coming into you. You look at a tree and you say it's a big tree, small tree, green tree, mango tree, this, that. All the time comments are going on. When you sit down to eat food, you're not eating food. You start worrying about your office or your family or this or that or comment on the food itself. The food is not being experienced. That's why I've said in the Mahavakyas, if you experience reality as it is, then you will just experience bliss. You will see this whole creation is perfect. It's the most beautiful thing and that you're already in heaven. You have made it into a hell. It is possible to liberate these senses from the clutches of thought. So thought is necessary when required. Otherwise, why should thought interfere? There's no need for thought to come and interfere with your actual experience. Now, when the senses become free of the control of thought or the mind, then we say you have discovered unconditional joy, the unconditional love. Such is this joy that you will feel that you are connected with everybody. So you discover true love. So this true love and this true joy are not separate things. They're all one and the same. And this is a natural occurrence. That is what you are designed to be. That is what a human being is supposed to experience all the time. Since you do not experience that, your lives have become miserable. And to escape that misery, you have created various escape routes through which all the time you are escaping from your misery, which misery itself is because you are not experiencing reality. That is why people take to alcohol or to drugs or sex or whatever that is. Because otherwise what is there in your life, it becomes meaningless. So, the whole attempt of this movement is to help you experience reality as it is. When that happens, you discover unconditional love and unconditional joy. You feel connected with everything and everybody. You do not feel you're a separate individual. You do not live for yourself alone anymore. Because the yourself has become everybody. You live for the sake of humanity. This is not a concept or some imagined thing. This is a day-to-day -day reality once you become enlightened or you become a mukta. And thousands of people have already got into this state. And even right now there are a few people sitting here 
who are in this state.